Uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to your session for the evening. First of all, absolutely delighted to see you all here for this special session. Now, uh, and the reason for doing this was that there are many of you that obviously are already trading share CFDs on uh, MT5. And there are also obviously many of you who trade shares as well as possibly some, some other instruments as well, such as FX, or maybe you do shares in share CFDs. Uh, or maybe shares and indices. So what uh, I thought I would do is, is offer something for you guys. For those who are interested in trading shares, if these obviously that's another story for another day, but you can drop me a, a line at any stage, potentially what you're interested in trading, and then I can sort of help you in terms of finding the right solutions for you. So what I will be doing is I want you to be able to take maximum advantage of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide a, a handout today what i've also done is sure that what we're looking at you can trade on mt5 so it, it accommodates both if that makes sort of sense so i hope that's sort of useful now as we start i just need to um i just need to make sure that you're hearing me and seeing me okay and now we'll get things kicked off formless if you wouldn't mind just type in the questions box lots of familiar faces here lots of not familiar faces fantastic guys thank you for your response that's absolutely awesome Happy New Year to you all. I hope you all had a great Christmas. Um, good to see you, Tim. Hi, Peter. G'day, Simon. Ross, um, to answer your question, Ross has asked a question about the link to download recordings of Inner Circle webinars. Uh, Ross, it's, it's done on an individual basis. So as long as you're registered, then invariably I get the team to send out to anybody who's registered a recording link. So uh, that should be okay. G'day, J&J. &J. Uh, how are you? Um, thank you, Simon. Uh, thank you, Wayne and Alison. Now it's your session. So what I'm going to do is we're going to talk about the markets first. We do this on every Inner Circle session. Now I've changed it. I'm going to give you six today um, because I actually found 12. I'm going to give you six today and then we're going to run another session. We will have a look at them and then um, I, I'll give you the handout of the slides. They're not very earth shattering, but we'll have a look at some charts too because uh, there's a combination of, of, of reasons why we might get into these. And I wanted to keep it under a dollar because I know that building a share portfolio can be expensive. And quite a lot of these, to be perfectly honest, are trading um, with the markets being as they have uh, in 2022. Um, then there are quite a few of these that are trading under valuation. So I'll reference the reasons for my interest in them as we go. Now, at the next session, I'm going to Many of you are part of a long-term portfolio service, which is outside of outside of Go with another hat on. Um, for you guys and another and many of you on here, uh, what I might do is just enter positions when in these anyway, just so that you can see when they're entered and uh, and track them accordingly as well. Uh, but but really, the bottom line is that just to reiterate a key message that, that this is for educational purposes only. You need to do your own due diligence. There's things like earnings. There's obviously a chunk of stuff going on in the on the on the planet which may impact going forward. Certainly, the uh, central bank intervention the, uh, that that will be ongoing during 2023 is just the speed of that. So that's the issue and extent. Uh, and obviously, the presence or otherwise of recessionary concerns. Uh, the COVID situation still hasn't gone away. China's been in lockdown for a significant amount of time. That's going to impact on some things. Um, so I'll talk about them uh, as we go through. But do your own due diligence, make sure they follow any trading plans that you've got in place. And of course, make sure you manage risk on every trading action, both on entry and exit. I'm just going to go over the rules all under $1. That's what I promised. That's what we're delivering. Uh, tradable share CFDs on MT5 as well as shares with any broker. Uh, and evidence of potential for fundamental and or price recovery. So. I'm going to give you my thought on why I picked these out of the gazillions that are there. They're not penny dreadfuls. They're all, I think the lowest is around about 50 cents, but they're all between 50 cents and a dollar. Number one, which has been our, actually our chart of the day, are the training section that, that I set up. Yeah, it is still relevant, but it's it needs updated. Uh, is BRN, Brentship Holdings. Now, this is in the tech space. It's uh, involved in artificial intelligence, so developed software to well enable artificial intelligence, machine learning, that sort of thing. It's in continuous development. This company has the advantage of actually, despite the, the, the sector being quite speculative, there's substantial support for those that are developing products and this company is. Uh, I would say this is probably a medium to high risk 
just simply because of the sector it's in. Although I, I, I really like this company, I think technically it looks clever as well. Uh, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. What I'm going to try and do is give you some um, indication of price entry. So technically, it's a branch here. We go. It's been trading within this range, and you can see there it was our chart today a couple of days ago. These are the accumulation points. 200 EMA sitting there, 84, 88 and a half, 94. Those are the three accumulation points. I think it might hit a dollar by the by sort of Q3, uh, maybe even quicker than that if this is anything to go by. But there's a broker upgrade. That is looking pretty good, whichever way you slice it. <laughs> maybe I need to use that. That's fine. Good now. Okay, thanks, Alan. Really appreciate it. Uh, right, okay, so that's stock one. Stock two, um, that uh, I'll put it as a medium medium to high risk, but I actually think it's a medium risk. Stock two is Pierbonne Lithium Limited. I couldn't really, uh, I couldn't really have, um, not have a, a lithium stock in here. Lithium has been a good story for a lot of the year, but it's pulled back significantly over the last uh, over the last two or three months, we'll look at some of the major lithium players like PLS, uh, AKE, uh, IGO, which is another stock I like, um, which is much more expensive, of course. But Piedmont Lithium is in not a bad place. It's It does most of its stuff in the US, has some sort of arrangement with Tesla, it suggested. Bottom line is lithium will remain an on-demand metal for the development of EVs. So it, it's all dependent on the the rollout of EVs. Or Now, obviously, we're, we're in a situation where we're looking at the Carbonisation, decreased reliance on fossil fuels generally. So, in terms of when EVs hit that tipping point where they become the primary, um, the primary type of car, it was still a little way off that. Though in France, it, it, it's accelerating. In the US, it's it's good. Australia is really lagging significantly. The batteries now don't need a significant amount of charging compared to their predecessors, so costs are coming down which is a good example of a lithium stock. This is one of our favorite stocks throughout 2022. We traded it multiple times on this move higher. Uh, then we got all the Twitch, uh, uh, recession, recession, recession. Oh my God, we're not going to sell the cars, all that sort of stuff. And then we're seeing that exacerbated uh, through the China lockdowns. So um, who are a buyer of, um, uh, of lithium. So all of the lithium stocks look like this. They're all back towards their 200 EMAs and, and, and sort of sitting around them. We look at um, just giving you IGO. Uh, I really like uh, this. Is probably my favoured material stock for the next six months. But it is obviously significantly more expensive than a dollar. But again, you can see it's around that 200 MA. Now PLL, which is the one we've sort of talked about, trading around about 66 cents. Um, well below their 200 EMA. You can already see that they've started to find a bottom on this. So we just put on a line chart just to take out some of the noise. Uh, there's a bottom that was tested around about 61. And you can see that was being sort of tested a little bit. If we put the if we put the line chart back on for a second, I think this is an important level here. Uh, around about this 67, 68 level, because that would suggest that we have got a, a reversal that's completed. For those of you more conservative, perhaps 69, 70 cents looks great. Now, it breaches 70 cents. So again, it possibly could be an accumulation of a little bit and then a little bit more. I put it online chart just because it's easier to see. But the reality is that that is the next level, around about that 200 MA, around about 81, 82 cents. In the first instance, that in itself is 13 or 14 percent. So that would be a very healthy return going forward uh, and is one of the reasons. So I, th I think it's all cooked in. I think the recession's cooked in. I think the China lockdown is cooked in. I think EVs uh, will, auto sales figure tonight out of the US will be influential on lithium stocks tomorrow, I believe. If that comes in at a disastrous level, uh, then I think we'll see it sort of retest these lows. I, I think if it sort of, if it comes in at a good level, better than expected, we could go up and away. Then obviously we're starting US earnings in 10 days time, I think. So yeah, there we go. Uh, that could be one to watch. As I said, I, you could accumulate if it has a nice jump tomorrow to, to, towards that sort of 70, uh, 70 cent mark, but it, it may be worthwhile just being a little patient with this because they have been so battered. So really number three is uh, Zipco Limited uh, in the financial sector, sort of FinTech if you like. 
um, much the same as after pay it offers solutions uh, to consumers and merchants to allow temporary credit the demand for this payment system just continues to grow the company delivered positive earnings figures at the last report somewhat surprisingly but has been absolutely mutilated over the last two years really it appears as though there's some uh, some broker coverage coming into this stock the thinking on this has been well look so this is where it was uh, if we look at mid pandemic um it was up near and just even go further back than that yeah it was much higher than that it was only at 13 dollars at one stage uh, at the back end of 2020 so it stabilized through uh, 2021 and then just sold off significantly not in a good place uh, at that stage it seems to have found a bottom and you can sort of bottomed out uh, around about may last year around about this sort of 38 40 cent level now this is what happened at last earnings report um, really popular or really well received and then all the sort of recessionary worries came into play again of what we're looking at with this. So this is our last dip, which took us down to a lows not seen since July last year. So if we look at this, we can sort of, sort of stick a line there. You can see how there's resistance here, support here. So I would say that if we get a move over 59, even if you want to be a little more, uh, a little more conservative, let's say 60, then we've got a really nice short term potential move up to 70. That's about 18%. I think the upside on this in the long term is probably quite massive. Uh, I think it is has the potential to be a takeover target if the company puts itself into an attractive place. Uh, so that is certainly another one. Uh, broker coverage. What happens is if a broker likes the look of a stock, so let's say Macquarie likes the look of a stock, they'll sort of grade it, oh, we're, we're going, we're overweight zip, meaning we're actually sort of, we're buying a lot of it. So if they instigate either instigate coverage on a new stock, which suggests that they're advising all their clients to buy, and it typically is the big boys, it's the Macoras of the world, you know, just stand the broker down the road. So if they begin or upgrade or downgrade their, their perception of a stock, then that usually, if it's a big enough uh, broker house, results in results in a price movement. Um, does that sort of help? Okay, uh, all good. Uh, right. It makes sense to include an iron ore stock. The, the, the one under a dollar that I quite like is MGX, Mark Gibson Iron, mostly over here in the West, Kimberley. Positive earnings figures last report suggesting of trading below valuation by some brokers. Um, I would say this is probably low risk. Iron ore is not traded in the same way that we get other metals traded. Again, this is a great site, this market index. I, I love it. This is iron ore price, and you can see it's on the move. There is an increase in demand for iron ore. The demand for it is going to be part of any infrastructure stuff with China reopening. Again, we've got a really fairly heavy battering from around about mid last year and recessionary fears and then China lockdown. Now we're recovering a little bit. Quite possible to see iron ore uh, up around 160. Uh, by the way, if you want to, I'm just going to give you another site or two. Um, actually have a look at trading economics. It's really a great site. So uh, there you go. You've got, uh, you can get as many as you like and so whatever you're interested in trading, you can find it there. And what you can do is you can just click on a chart. So if we were interested in lithium, we can click on a chart uh, and there we see a chart of what's happened to lithium price. So lithium price has dropped off a little bit. I think China is a net importer of lithium when it's functioning normally. So that's just a great site. I'll just put that up there and you can have a little play with trading economics. Okay, so MGX, let's have a look at the chart. We haven't had a look at the chart yet. Uh, if we compare it with, let's say, FMG, let's just... Have a look at Fortescue. Uh, so this is what Fortescue were doing, probably coming up to a key level around about 2180, should make its way up to there. That's not a massive response, but it's a, obviously it's a company which is Fortescue, which has, uh, it's about 3.8%, 3 possibly about 6% up to 2282. I think that's about the highest it's going to get in the short term. But what these brokers do is they just look at a chart like this and say, all right, okay, the, the top there was 2595. Let's stick a 20, if we like Fortescue, we'll stick a $26 price target on that. It's really as simple as that. There's nothing clever or unusual about it. It sort of makes me a bit mad. But um, anyway, that's just me. Uh, and I can give you that in 30 seconds and not charge you a, not charge you a stack of brokerage to do so. Anyway, that's what FMG are doing. If we look at Mount Gibson Iron, what you tend to find with smaller stocks is they tend to have a little bit more movement. But is is Mount Gibson Iron day? Now, what it's done is if we just, again, take this, take some of the noise out. Uh, you can see here, there's a 200 EMA, okay? That's proof. That's a 200 EMA. So essentially, it's tested that since mid December. So now we're in a trade range. We've got a really nice support level, which was resistance before. We can put that 
on all line chart. I told you to take off the line chart, put it on the candles just to show you. So it's managed even on these days just to hold it, hold its own a little bit. So we really sort of like this going forward. And or what we're looking at potentially is this level here, around about 53 cents. Again, there's a potential to accumulate into this, but I think this is probably not the way to do it with this stock. I think it's possibly worth just being a little patient with this, waiting for that 54 cent breach. Um, and then I think if it breaches 54, we've got a really nice run up. Uh, possibly to uh, around about this 60, 64 cent level, even being conservative on this, we could say, well, look, uh, even up to 58, it's around about eight and a half percent, 18 percent up to 863. So that would be my favorite iron ore stock. If you wanted something under a dollar, you want something that's valued, valued well for, the, for its price point now. Uh, and you like the iron ore story increasing over the coming months as China reopens. As we realize we're in for a soft landing, not a hard landing. From a recession point of view, we think that'll do well. Right, okay, so that's number four. Number five, EML. Uh, this is in the tech finance. This uh, EML provides sort of payment technology solutions. to various. going to have a, a, a deeper dive on the company, find out what they do, but they, they are a B2B company, essentially. And so they are another stock which have been mutilated. All these fintech stuff is, was absolutely battered over the last 12 months. Their earnings have been really quite ordinary, but they've done a massive restructure and they presented the development plan at their last AGM, which went down really, really well, very well received by markets. And to the level where I'll put them at a low to medium risk and probably one of the lower risk stocks at current value. In fact, um, I, I would enter these tomorrow, possibly. Um, so let's have a little look at on a chart. So I've been tracking these for a while, uh, as you can tell by all the lines on the chart. I'm going to take these lines off and start again from scratch. Okay, so again, let's have a look at the longer term monthly. So you can see how low it is. Okay, it's really going absolutely new. So it was up around about six dollars at one stage. So it's down about ninety percent. Now this is what happened at their last. Uh, subsequent to their last earnings, if we just bring it close and do a little bit of drawing on this. So this was when that was released. Let's change the color so you can actually see it because I think it's default is black. There we go. Should see that now. Yep. Uh, so this is what happened on that AGM uh, sort of earnings. So we had a big jump. We had a close of this gap here um, in one session. So it, it, it sort of reached this level here and then i think just the um again just the, the sort of recessionary chart let's see what we can take profit in uh, if you bought into this at around about 47 50 then it's up at 70 you've done exceptionally well so some of this was profit taking uh, and i think some of this recently has been institutional buying coming back in again now this gave away about half of that gain uh, from this one candle here so what we've had is got a nice bounce here we'll put it on a line chart you can see why this is a level of interest and why I'm on the cusp of, of getting into some of this potentially is if we look at 63 there, uh, that looks really quite positive. Let's put this up to 70. Let's make a nice round number. Uh, so even that is, is over a 10% return. Now, if we breach that and there's no reason, if they keep on producing results, uh, so a lot of the Australian companies begin to report, essentially they report every six months. Um, and you can, Again, look, this is just my, it's just such a good sign. Uh, again, you can sort of, if we were interested in uh, BML, uh, we can uh, zip it down here and we can find out when the next report, as you can see, the next report is the 15th of Feb, so it's not actually that long away, about sort of six weeks away, we should get an indication of. And there, at that point there, where, how far along we are. So before that price point, I think 70 cents is a reasonable target. What I would possibly do then is there's a couple of ways you can play that earnings, is, is maybe take half it off, uh, just in case that earnings report is inverse, bank it, knowing that you've made about 10% on that, and then uh, you can always accumulate further if it reaches 70. Uh, it's really quite a simple strategy to play. Uh, but that, as I said, that is one that I that is really on my radar right now for a move over 64. I think that would be good. Fundamentally, it's strong. There's reasons for that move up, and technically, it's looking interesting as well. Okay, so last one for this evening is Mesoblast. I, I felt I had to include a healthcare stock. Uh, this is in the stem cell research 
space, particularly focusing on MLCs, as, as it says there. There's, um, stem cell research continues to offer unique solutions to, to a lot of healthcare situations, uh, and I think will continue to do so. Um, it's had a lot of bad press of late. I would say this in, in, in light of that, it's, it, it, it's medium to high risk, but I think this company is, is well placed to potentially take advantage of that. Um, I, I'm not sure I'll be in this long term, uh, but certainly over the next sort of maybe quarter or so, it'll be interesting to see how far this goes up. Uh, so we had a key level here um, at around about 87, which was breached. Uh, but ever since that, it, it's made its way back over that level now, and we're at 88, 88 and a half. In terms of where this could go, well, it, it's a difficult one to call because it's quite choppy, but you would expect it possibly to move up to around about 94. I, I think this is set for a dollar. If we look at where this might be, um, if we look at its performance historically, a dollar isn't unreasonable in terms of its recovery. Uh, it's obviously been under significant pressure. And now it's showing signs of a reversal, but we're just sort of stepping back up. And I think that'll be the case. I think it'll step up to a dollar first and then the markets will do a rejudge on this and see if it's worth a dollar ten. So even in the short term, to me, it looks it looks pretty good for this move up to uh, up to a dollar, which, as I said, would be a significant return in this market uh, of around about uh, 10 to 11 percent. We may get a little pause around 95, but so that's just for short-term traders to a place which is comfortably technically in the short term as well. So for, it, it might suit you short-term traders too. Uh, so that is our number six. Now, what I did, uh, what I'm, I'm going to do two things from here. First of all, I am going to make sure that you have a chance to... Is there any there that, that are lighting your candle? Right, it should be in there now. If you look in handouts, in your handouts bit of your control box, you should see there. You all look interesting. I, I think the way to tackle this is, as I said, what I'm going to do is I'll do another session like this in about a fortnight's time with another six. And as I said, I'm, I'm trying to think of a way that I can, but you do need to have a look at them more closely. You do need to make sure you have the right mix for what you're doing. I tried to make it multi-sector. I'd really like to find, uh, as I said, I'd really like to find a, Anybody has any dramas downloaded or anything, just pop me a little line to Mike. Go Smith at GoMarkets.com. And the key thing to do with these is on, on every on every one you need to you need to score them in, in in terms of how good you think they are for you and for your particular objectives. And you also need to sort of specify some criteria, not only which would enable you to get in, but but also exits are vitally important with this. So that is really the presentation for tonight. I hope it's been interesting and useful in terms of giving you some things to have a look at, giving you a, a little bit of an insight into my sort of approach as well. Uh, so, so let me give you an example. So let's let's take Mesoplast here. You can see the 200 EMA is sitting there, at just over a dollar. Why wouldn't you, if getting into this, you set a profit target that's just underneath there, maybe 99 cents or 98 and a half or something. In terms of your stop loss, you say, right, my trading idea is it's gone going back into this range and that's the potential upside on this. What price point would say this is not happening? This is not a trading idea that's happening. So if you do not have a purely technical reason, you would say, right, okay, look, if it breaches the low there and possibly test these lows here at around about 82, 83 cents, I'm going to make that my stop. So what I'm going to do is if my total risk limit is, is $100, and I don't want to lose more than $100 per share or per share CFD or on that five cent drop. So you can work out then. Uh, there's a share CFD calculator, which I can give anybody access to that wants it. Um, if you're trading stocks, you, you do exactly the same thing. If you're using a technical reason, if you're using a fundamental reason, you've just got to be disciplined as hell to get out and say, right, OK, auto sales are rubbish. They are going to continue to be rubbish. This recession is getting deeper. Lithium is not going to be in a good place going forward, not only in the next six months, but also in the next year. It's done, it's dusted, let's get out of lithium stocks. So you've got to, if you are using EVs as a, uh, and lithium for batteries thing, as your reason for getting in, then you use those for your reason for getting out. You don't mess around, you don't pray to the gods of the markets and say, hey, look, come on, um, help me out here. You've got to have a strict exit plan based on fundamental or technical reasons.
So you've done calculator, absolutely. Um, ping me a um, ping me an email through. Michael, you're so welcome. Okay, well, look, I think that's it. Trade safe, and we'll see you again soon. Bye bye for now.